So I had a question the other day um, about are we insuring, um, and people were asking me, is it hard or soft? You know, you know, how soft is your windshield? How hard is your windshield? In some ways, it, the, the, I understand the question, but it's an irrelevant question in some ways because martial arts is an alchemy of change, right? If the opponent comes in hard and I, I want to disperse what they're doing, I can't go hard against hard, right? If the opponent's weak, weak and I can smash them, is that hard against soft, right? Yeah, it's, it's all a play on words, right? Because at the end of the day, I have to have the alchemy of, of movement. So when I feel something, I want to have I want to have free movement and softness in my positioning, right? So um, if I'm, I mean, we use two sales on platform, right? So if, uh, if Ali pushes towards me and I'm stiff, then she's going to uproot my balance because I'm stiff, right? So of course it can't be stiff, right? If it's floppy and soft, right? And she pushes towards me, it's going to collapse, right? Right? And if I try to yield all the time, then she's going to chase me down and smash me, right? Okay. If I try to be stiff and push her back, then she, I open my, my range up for her to strike over me or kick me, right? So that all these things, it's kind of like, they're irrelevant because the whole thing is all wrong, right? My wing chung is very, very relaxed, right? Iron forearm, right? That's what you want, heavy forearms. Iron forearm, being curved belly, so your body's soft, right? Glass head, which means protect your head, right? Okay, and I always add in the idea of, I want rubber arms, right? So this is rubber with, with iron on the end, right? So this is like a rugby feeling. But at the same point, my wrist can become rubber and they can become steel again or iron again, right? So it's all about alchemy of change. So when Ali is wrong and she pushes towards me, I'm soft, see, it releases. And then I strike, right? And then if she pushes towards me, I'm soft and I bounce her off because my body becomes very spongy, right? Even if someone punches me, you punch, I sink my weight, I sink my diaphragm, punch, punch, punch. And there's no, there's no, it just bounces because your body is relaxed. You breathe in, sink your diaphragm. If I tense my abs and tense my heart, she punches. That hurt. Go hit her. That's it. That hurts. It's the tension. It makes the punch uh, conducted through the body into the tissues. If I sink my diaphragm, become very relaxed, and when she punches now, it just bounces. Right? It's no problem. Right? So we're, I'm sorry. It doesn't hurt. Right? So the thing is here, when she pushes towards me, I relax, I strike, I extend. Right? So everything is soft. Right? I have to have control of positions. So I need a good alignment for that. The alignment again is not stiff. I see a lot of people do stuff where someone punches towards them. And they're, they're blocking like this, and their arm is tense. They're stiff, right? You push towards me, here, push, 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 push. Snake energy, right? Push, it's soft. Let's see how her balance is going, right? Push, 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 push. Push, <laughs> right? Because I'm feeling every intricate movement. I'm feeling the balance, the timing, the awareness, the layers of skill, right? It's not like, you do this, I do that, right? That's a big, very much a beginner's application, right? The high level is all about feeling pressure. Push towards me. Feel pressure. Is it going out? Then I go this way. Is it going across? I go this way. That's fundamentally simple, right? But the difference in that is, it kind of make it go where I want to go. You push towards me. I'm actually guiding you out by putting pressure back into you at the same time, making you overcommit, right? That's the higher level, right? That's why we get the flowing skill. So when we're rolling, often people just lose their balance with me. See, they flow, right? They stroke because I'm pressurizing them so much that it makes them want to give too much pressure, and that takes my balance because I, re- I start to release it. Um, someone was asking me the other day, saying, well, you know, with Ali, she's not hitting you that much. She's trying to hit me a lot. <laughs> you can ask her. Yeah. Are you trying to hit me? Yes, I'm trying to hit you, but my feet all the time is moving. I can't get my grip to get anything, yeah. so I had to get my balance back. Because I'm always affecting her balance. Because she's fast and she's strong and she's good. So all my students are like that. But when they roll me, people say, oh, they don't look, as, look like what you do. They don't do what you're doing. Well, I always say to people, it's like running a race. We run a race together, someone crosses the line. Everybody knows you've won. Right? Doesn't mean the person behind them wasn't good, right? They're very, very good. It's just that people remember who won, right? So I, if we're doing cheese, so obviously whoever strikes looks like they're doing better. Doesn't mean that person's not very good, okay? Because that person's giving me a lot of hassle to get them strikes, right? And they're learning my system. So in some ways, um, I have an advantage, right? It's actually hard. If we free spar, she has a little bit more advantage because because I don't know really what she's going to do 100%. I, can try, I try to create it by making her do certain things. By, by, by pressurizing in a way that causes a situation that I'm, I'm, I can control. But you know, she has more more tools available when you free spar. That's why you need to free spar as well as do chi sa, otherwise you can become deluded, right? Okay? So chi sa is a really, really helpful tool, tool for your training. It's like a, a speed bag, a focus pads, heavy bag, you know, it's like a speed ball all in one, and it's all alive and it's all active. So it's, a, it's an amazing way to learn. But it's still not. It's still not fighting 100%, right? You still need to apply that into into, into fighting and learning your bridging and controlling bridges, right? So here, she pushes towards me. I can hold the pressure. And I can release the pressure. And as she pushes towards me, 
right? And always putting pressure into her body. So if you're always feeling pressure into your body, when you push towards somebody, you're feeling you're pushing through a lot of pressure. And then when they push too much to try to overcome it, I release it, take her balance, right? So all our linking, delinking skills, uh, the force flow skill, which is really, the force flow is that smoother form of linking, delinking, where I've got such a smooth control movement, it looks like I'm just pushing her around and she's not doing anything, right? So that looks like Ali's not trying very hard. It looks like I'm pushing her and she's purposely falling, like a Star Trek, you know? <laughs> and the things are attacking, they're all falling around, right? It's not really, what's happening is I'm, I'm making her proprioception work too hard and her nervous system is shutting down, okay? Because what's happening is she's getting too much information to deal with to get her balance, okay? And my body is very smooth to control it because it looks like I'm not doing anything, like I'm not moving. But my body is doing this, it's moving and controlling and it's sending, in, sending firing muscles and controlling pressures and angles and vectors. But you don't see it because my layers are so layered, right? So if Ali has 10 layers off, I have 100 layers, right? So she can kind of feel what I'm doing, but just there's ones in between that she doesn't feel, right? And that's why we do cheese out a lot. That's why we have to train regularly. That's why you have to be diligent with your practice. And that's why knowing the forms is not knowing when you You know, people say to me, oh, I know the third form. I look what they're doing. Yeah. You know the third form, but it's not the third form level, right? You only know the form, but the form without any substance is just skin and hair. In Chinese, we say it's superficial, skin and hair. You want bone and marrow. It needs to be in your DNA, right? So when you push towards me, yeah. Okay. See? Okay. See? I'm just always a little bit ahead on the position, right? So then we add that into the combat where we're looking to strike and control and I'm disrupting her balance. She always feels like if she tries to strike, there's not time to control that position, right? Because I'm always in control of her weight. Right? And then the tools, you're adding your striking and you're adding your striking positions, then obviously you're trying to deal with not getting hit, right? So if you're dealing with not getting hit, you're thinking about not getting hit as well as your balance, right? So it becomes very difficult. To control that stuff when you have that kind of pressure, right? So I don't have to think about it. I can close my eyes, talk to you, not worry about anything that's going on, and I can deal with it anything I want to deal with because my body has so many layers. In fact, when I'm doing it this way, I get more relaxed and I get it's easier, right? Because my, my body feels the position without thinking about it, right? So it's actually an easier thing to perform when I can just relax and forget about it and think about how I'm going to have for dinner, you know, I can think about. You know, one way to do later on, what's on TV, right? it doesn't matter, right? And I can have that control, because there's a lot of control involved. Someone says to me, why don't you hit her harder? Because if you smash her, she knows she's been hit. Do you know you got hit? Oh, no, I've hit right? 100 times. Yeah. She's not stupid, right? You know, she knows, if my hand's here, I don't want to smash her face in, right? I don't need to smash her in the face to see what the reaction would be. The reaction would be blood and being unconscious, right? Okay, but if we can do cheese out and I can hit her, and go here, just touch. And she knows, she can, get a hand, she can do two things, she can get her hand up and go where she should have been and carry on, or we go back to rolling, mm -hmm. right? Or sometimes we just carry on moving because we know what happened mm -hmm. and we're aware of that. And if she keeps doing the same mistake, I'll keep doing the same technique. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, oh, she'll go home and think about, why did I hit 10 times that one? Oh, I wasn't doing this. Well, she'll ask me a question, so I'll come work it out. So, okay, this is the answer, let's try it, right? Then we're training. So it's all feedback within your cheese cell, right? So that's why cheese cell to me is, is such a wise, complicated uh, area of learning. And most people, to me, when I look at it, yeah, I know some people say I'm arrogant because I look at stuff and say, well, that's not has a good structure, or that doesn't work, or because there's so many layers to it that people don't seem to see. Because you know, I've trained for nearly 30 years, and I've travelled around the world and trained with the best teachers, and I have, in my mind, a very, very awesome teacher, Robert Chu who's helped me and mentored me and taught me to levels that I, I could never dream of. And that's a very enriching process. And I give that back to my students and my students give that back to me through how, how hard they work, right? And through that whole process, we've, we've evolved a level of depth to what we do. And we're not saying we're better than anybody else because everybody, other people have good systems, I've met good teachers from completely different points of view, but there is a lot of rubbish around as well, right? So it's not arrogant to say that 80% of Wing Chun is nonsense. And there is 20% of guys that are doing good stuff, and there's, there's other lineages that are good, doing good things. For sure there is, right? But some systems have a few guys that are just tough, that produce good results, but none of the students do. So for me, that's not a good show of a system, right? All my students, doesn't matter who they are, can present themselves well with what they're doing. They understand what they're doing, right? They have the potential to use it in, in a productive way. That's what's important to me. So it's not an arrogant viewpoint. It's an educated viewpoint from experience and training and from... Uh, feedback from uh, from my guys, from people I know, my 
Okay, and there is, I'm, not, I'm never going to say there's not other good systems out there, there is, of course there is. But what I'm saying is, a lot of times people present stuff to me, and I look at stuff, and it's not that good. It doesn't mean that the person's a bad person, it doesn't mean I don't like them, it doesn't mean that I'm hateful. It's just, we're talking about something. If you go to someone, you give them a, 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 an English paper and say, can you read my English paper? And they say, your English is not, it wasn't very good, you got a D or you got a C. You don't then try to say, that person's arrogant, you know, that's the teacher, right? They have more skills than you, right? Why did you give them the papers to look at, right? Okay? If I, people say to me, you know, I'm closed minded, you know, I think, I've learned five martial arts to black belt level, right? I nearly broke my whole body learning jiu-jitsu for the last 12 years, right? And wrestling, you know, hard things. I was already like 15 years into Wing Chun already, so I was already good at Wing Chun by that point. And I thought, okay, now I'm going to learn jiu-jitsu and wrestling, right? And I was obviously older, so, you know, it's been a hard road, a hard process, and I've been lucky to have really awesome teachers. Uh, Mark Wiley, Lina Gao, you know, Eddie Millis, you know, uh, Matt Miller, some really good teachers that have really enriched my process of learning. Um, you know, and th with that sort of learning, you can't be closed minded, right? Because I've been smashed, tapped out, punched, broken so many times, right? You know, there's no such thing as an ego when, you, when, you're, when you're learning different martial arts like that. So that, that whole argument kind of falls down for me. If I had an ego about it, then I wouldn't have done the other martial arts. I would stuck with being strong, stick with another, stay in my comfort zone. I wouldn't have Ali beating me up every week, you know, jiu-jitsu, right? So, you know, that's, that's to me, is just irrelevant, right? It's crazy, crazy stuff, right? So hard or soft? The answer is none, right? That's the void of martial arts, right? There is no hard or soft. Hard or soft to explain things? Yeah, you use terminal energy, you use words, you have to articulate yourself, so you have to try and get things across. But trying to mis misuse the words or trying to put them into boxes to say, this is hard, this is soft, right? Because it's a, it's a whole alchemy of change. That's what we're looking at. Yeah? Thanks, Eddie. And I'm very lucky to have good people around me that keep me very humble, right? You know, I train with professional fighters all the time. I teach really good level fighters. And, um, you know, when you train people like that, everything you do has to be, has to be in the real world, right? People talk about wind showing and street fighting. You know, yeah, of course, on the street, there's things you can do that um, are different for sport. But at the end of the day, the attributes that you have to perform at that level, you know, I put my money on the sport guy, you know, most of the time, right? You know, that person is dedicated, training hard, is used to pressure, used to robustness, right? So, you know, that, that that's another argument in terms of, you know, hard or soft. If you're floppy and soft, you're going to get against a tough, stiff guy, then the tough, stiff guy is probably going to beat you up, even though his wind, his wind chung is not that good, right? Okay, you need to have that balance of things, right? So you need to train with all the different elements, right? If you don't train with all the different elements, you're going to have limitations, right? So I hope that's helpful.